In section 3.3, we're going to take everything from section 3.2 and reverse it all. Find the converse of everything. So rather than being given parallel lines and proving alternate exterior angles, alternate interior angles, corresponding and same side interior, we're now going to use all of those angles to prove that the lines are parallel. So let's remember that the converse of a theorem is found by exchanging the hypothesis and the conclusion. The converse of a theorem is not automatically true. If it is true, it must be stated as a postulate or proved as a separate theorem. So here's our postulate, the converse of the corresponding angles postulate. Now you remember that the corresponding angles postulate said, if you had parallel lines with a transversal that cuts them, the corresponding angles are congruent. This is just the opposite. If two coplanar lines cut by a transversal, so a pair of corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So if you know that M and M are cut by a transversal, and you know 1 and 2 are congruent, then you know that, that the lines M and N are parallel. So in example 1, we're going to use the converse of the corresponding angles postulate and the given information to show that the lines are parallel. So in A, we know that angle 1 and angle 5 are congruent. So if angle 1 and angle 5 are congruent, I mean this one's really easy, the next step would say L and M are parallel. And the reason with that would be because of the converse of corresponding angles theorem. Now in part B, this is what we're given. The measure of angle 4 is equal to 2x plus 10, and the measure of angle 8 is equal to 3x minus 55, and x equals 65. So let's first look at angle 4 and angle 8. Angle 4 and angle 8 are corresponding angles. So let's plug in our value of x into each expression. The measure of angle 4 by substitution would be 65 times 2 plus 10, which gives you 130 plus 10, which is 140 degrees. And that's by substitution. The measure of angle 8, we plug in 65. 3 times 65, and we subtract 55, that also gives us 140 degrees. Each of those are by substitution. We now can say the measure of angle 4 is equal to the measure of angle 8 because of substitution. We could also say the transitive property of equality. And then we know that angle 4 is congruent to angle 8, and the reason is definition of congruent angles. And then we can say that line L is parallel to line M because of the converse of corresponding angles theorem. Now this is called a parallel postulate. A parallel postulate says, through a point P, not on line L, there is exactly one line parallel to L. That basically says this, if you have a line that's named whatever, and you have a point that's not on the line, you can draw exactly one line that's parallel to the original line. The converse of corresponding angles postulate is used to construct parallel lines. The parallel postulate guarantees that for any line L, you can always construct a parallel line through a point that is not on that line. And here's how you do it. Just watch as I show you what you're going to do. If you draw a line using a straight edge, and you name it whatever you want, and you draw any other point that's not on this line, let's just call it point P, the next step would be to draw your transversal. It does not matter where it intersects. You could have drawn it up here, but we just draw a line straight across, and I named it M. Now, here's where you use your compass. 
you are going to take your compass and with the point here, you're going to construct an arc. Using that same setting, you're going to put the point here on P and construct the same arc. It's just like constructing two congruent angles. Now you put the point here where the arc intersects the blue line and you figure out the distance and make an arc here. Then you put the point here and can, using the same setting you construct an arc and this intersection of the two arcs and P would be the intersection of where you draw the parallel line. So now we have three theorems. Now we have three converses of those theorems. So the converse of alternate interior angle theorem says that if you have two alternate in, um, interior angles that are congruent, then the lines are parallel. The converse of the alternate exterior angles theorem says if you have two angles that are congruent that are alternate exterior, then you have the lines that are parallel. The converse of the same side interior angles theorem says if you have two same side interior angles that are supplementary, then the two lines are parallel. In example number two, we're going to determine that the lines are parallel using the given information and the theorems you have learned. So in A, it says angle two and angle six are congruent. If angle two and angle six are congruent, we can say that R is parallel to S. And what's the reason? because of the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem. B, same thing, we have 10, let's plug it in. By substitution, we can say the measure of angle six equals 60 plus 18 which is 78 degrees, that's substitution. The measure of angle seven equals 90 plus 12. That gives us 102 degrees. Now both of those are the reason is substitution. Now, angle six and angle seven are what type of angles? They're supplementary. So we can say the measure of angle six plus the measure of angle seven equals 180 degrees. And so the reason would be that because they're supplementary, we can say that angle six and angle seven are same side interior angles, and that's a really bad, let me fix that there, interior angles. And because they're interior angles, we can say that because of the converse of same side interior angles theorem, that the two lines are parallel. Now, I'm writing all these definitions and reasons. If it doesn't say to prove it, like it doesn't say to two column proof, you don't need these. You can actually just do the work and tell me if they're parallel or not. So I'm just doing all these reasons to help you out as the reasons why we're doing it. Now in example three, we are gonna have a proof. So proving lines parallel. We know that L and M are parallel. Angles one and angle three are congruent. We have to prove that R and P are parallel. So let's do our proof. So I started by saying that L and M are parallel. So let's mark that on our figure. Oh, it's already marked. In angle one and angle three are congruent and the given. The reason is because it's a given. So where do we go from here? Well, because L and M are parallel, P is a transversal, we can say angle one and angle two are congruent. And why is that? 
because if angle one and angle two are congruent because L and M are parallel, that would be because they're corresponding angles. So this would be the corresponding angles postulate. So now we know that these two are parallel. Now we can claim what? If 1 and 2 are parallel and 1 and 3 are parallel, we can say angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. Why? This is always hard for students to get. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 and angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 because of what? The transitive property of congruence. Now, because angle two and angle three are congruent, we know that line R is parallel to line P because angle two and angle three are what type of angles? They're alternate exterior. So we can say the converse of alternate exterior angles theorem. Example number four, a sports application. During a race, all members of a rowing team should keep their oars parallel on each side. If the measure of angle one is equal to 3x plus 13, and the measure of angle 2 is 5x minus 5, and x equals 9, show that the oars are parallel. Now you should notice that the boat represents the transversal, and the two oars represent, well, what could be parallel lines. So we can substitute in 9 for measures of angle 1 and angle 2. So the measure of angle 1 is 3x plus 13, that gives us 27 plus 13, which gives us 40 degrees. The measure of angle 2 is 5x minus 5. We plug in 9, that's 45 minus 5, which is 40 degrees. So, they're corresponding angles. So we've just proven that the ors are parallel. Why? Because the converse of the corresponding angles postulate.